I will now call on Dr. Kenton Dashu, Deputy Director General of Partnership for Delivery at IIPA, to make his keynote presentation. Dr. Dashu, over to you. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, Martin, thank you for that uh, wonderful introduction. You've really got it off, uh, us off started on the right foot. Yes, uh, TAT is under the Feed Africa umbrella. Uh, and for Feed Africa to, to succeed, we need to achieve two goals. First, we need to significantly raise agriculture productivity. And second, we need to move African production much higher on the value chain with agribusinesses producing and selling processed goods, not simply basic commodities. And TAT is really focused on the first goal, raising agriculture productivity. There are a number of other activities, uh, programs, et cetera, in the African Development Bank Feed Africa program that will handle other areas. One of the things that uh, is important is the actual grain yields or average cereal grain yields in the continents are listed here, starting from 1960 through 2015. And the top line is North America and Europe. There's two lines in the middle there, Asia and Latin America. And then the bottom line is Sub-Saharan Africa. This is the challenge that we face. It's very uh, same thing that Martin told us, we need to increase the grain yields. The good news is that between 2000 and 2015, agriculture production has grown more rapidly in Sub-Saharan Africa than in the other region in the world. This has put more money in the hands of millions of farmers and that helps stimulate rural economic growth. This is the good news. The bad news is that the rapid growth was driven primarily by expansion of cultivated area and not increases in grain yields. So the way forward is we need to raise the productivity of existing farmlands. And to do this, we need farmers to adopt the new technologies and sustainable practices so that they will get these high yields that we need. To do this, we need the private sector, large, small, and micro businesses to make the investments required so that the inputs will be available, so that uh, there will be market channels for the off takers, for the et cetera, et cetera, private sector heavily involved. And finally, we see that many African governments are seeking policy and technical guidance to help them develop and implement their programs in a practical way. And TAT is ready to partner with them. Now, we also uh, know that TAT deploys these proven technologies in partnerships with governments and the private sector. And this is done at a moderate to a low scale, uh, meaning that, for example, TAT may, uh, the core of TAT may do this in say five communities in a country, but we need to do it in a thousand communities, 2000, 10,000 communities. And to do this, that's where government programs come in and the private sector can really scale these things out massively. So uh, TAT is more of a catalyst to stimulate governments to invest their resources to get the private sector. So the vision is to reach 40 million farmers and to add 120, 120 million metric tons. And we want to radically transform African agriculture. We're not talking about changing a little thing here and a little thing there and increasing yields by 5%, 8%. No, we need major changes so that yields are increased by 50%, 80%, 100%. And we're, TAT is doing this through eight priority investment uh, intervention areas. And these areas include self-sufficiency in rice, cassava intensification, food and nutrition security in the Sahel, transforming African savannas, revitalizing tree plantations, horticulture, wheat, and inland fish production. So if you're involved or interested in any of these key areas, you can be part of TAT and we want you to be with us. So the, the seed funding uh, or the catalyst that funding that that TAT is using is focusing on nine commodity compacts. And this word compact, what it means is teams, 
It means teams of institutions led by one institution that have agreed to come together to uh, work on that specific area. And uh, what I've listed here is the nine commodities that TAT is presently working on, along with the institution that is leading that particular area. We have maize with AATF, rice, Africa rice, wheat, Icarda, sorghum and millet, Icrasat, uh, cassava, IITA, high iron beans, siat, orange flesh sweet potato, sip, aquaculture, world fish, livestock, ilri. These are the commodity compacts. Then we have six enabler compacts. These are the compacts that are supporting the commodity compacts. Those things, those tools that the um, commodity compacts need to support them so that they can be successful. This includes soil and soil and fertilizer with IFDC, water management with WIMI, capacity delivery and technology outreach with FARA, enable youth with IITA, the fall armyworm compact that is uh, an emergency compact addressing this terrible pest led by IITA and policy with AATF. You'll notice that there are actually nine CGIR centers working uh, in this system. So it's, it's following the, the new one CGIR model for Africa. So we're very excited about that. The key here is the institutions leading the compacts are the, are the African authorities on that subject. They can provide the best guidance, the best advice. TAT is working in 27 countries, and you can see them here uh, in the, with the green areas, uh, and we hope to expand to some more countries. So uh, the key here is the CGIAR and other institutions provide the package of practices and innovative solutions that supersede the traditional technologies that are currently available. This is the core of TAT to get the best production technologies that are available for farmers and get them in the hands of farmers. So the role of the private, private sector is extremely important um, because they provide the long-term sustainable agribusiness growth. Markets in the urban and rural communities capable of moving massive scaling, uh, both the input markets and the output markets so that the production uh, in, the, in the rural areas will move to the cities for sale. You know, and this is not as easy it sound, as it sounds because in many countries, the marketing channels are from the port, the importation of goods to the big cities. So this is very important to the private sector. And some other examples of partnerships that are critically important are seed companies for seed systems, input supplies. These are the agro dealers and the manufacturers are the producers of the inputs, um, of course, the marketing channels, and the provision of farm mechanization is extremely important. Once again, I want to uh, put emphasis that linking TAT to country investments with the countries, the governments programs, the private sector programs, the core of TAT can provide that stimulus, but we need those partners to really scale out. And we haven't talked about how we do the scaling and uh, that's a whole subject in itself, but basically it's looking for the bottlenecks and correcting those bottlenecks that are preventing farmers from getting the technologies that they need. And if you want to go to the website called Scaling Readiness, you can get some more details on that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your kind attention and you are all welcome to join TAT. Together, we will transform African agriculture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Dashi, for that great and stimulating presentation. I like in what that is all about, the strategies to engage partners and the use of country linkages to ensure that we achieve our goals and transform African agriculture. Without any waste of time, I will call on my colleague, Inonsen Mosobimana, to give us a brief overview of the achievement of some of the TAC compacts. Inonsen, if you attend, please. Thank you, moderator. Good day to all of you. And thank you for joining us in this session. Special thanks to Martin and uh, Ken Dashil for setting the stage for this uh, session. Uh, for me, it will be uh, taking you through with examples, with 
examples of achievement of tax for the last two years. And uh, from the uh, previous presenters, presenters, it was very clear that the TAT program works. It has proven uh, achievement uh, through a very strong partnership with uh, the CTR centers, uh, the National Extension Services and National Research Institute, the private sector, the farmers organization, to make this happening by increasing productivity uh, across commodities. So as the TAT started for the last two years, the target is to reach 40 million farmers on the continent by 2025 with uh, a proven technology that these farmers are able to access to proven technology to be able to double crop productivity, livestock, and fishery so that the poverty and malnutrition and food insecurity are uh, lifted across the continent. So far, where we are, uh, so far we have reached for the, after two years, we have reached to 50, almost 50% 50 of our target and 19 million of beneficiaries benefited from these technologies. Uh, as that program, the main major big component is availability and accessibility of quality improved seed. So through this collaboration with the seed companies, farmers association, uh, government, we were able to produce these metric tons across commodities from grains, legumes, root and tubers, and aquaculture. The purpose is mainly only addressing issue of food insecurity, but also tackling the issue of malnutrition that is across the continent, especially by availing quality proved seed of high iron beans, and also look to the uh, orange sweet potato as uh, nutrition values as we go around. So the root and tubers that are very important food security, uh, we work with uh, uh, the, the compact, the government, the research institute and extension services to avail all these cuttings uh, to farmers who are able to access to these high yielding varieties. The same applies for aquaculture, a very important commodity when it comes to source of income, but also as a source for uh, nutrition, nutritious food. Let's take you through with example, very specific example of achievement when you talk about the maize commodity, with, uh, which is very important as a, a commodity at, at the continent in terms of the food security and also uh, access to, uh, uh, to, to income for farmers. So for the last two years, uh, through this network of collaboration, who, uh, by lead of IITF, who is a, a compact leader, uh, together with company, uh, companies, city companies, National Research Institute, working with farmers organization, were able to reach 2.3 million of farmers across the, uh, uh, the, the, the continent, especially Western part, when you go to Eastern and Southern part of continent. And this was not only availing a high yielding uh, variety and uh, uh, drought tolerant variety of maize, but coupled with a technology of uh, efficient water use and also the rate of fertilizer as we work closely with IFDC, but also with uh, uh, International Water Management Institute to make this availability of technology to farmers. So this has led to increase of uh, income farmers. So before the intervention, they were able, they were uh, ha uh, having income of uh, 300 USD per hectare, and now it has reached up to uh, uh, almost 500 uh, USD. Uh, with this collaboration with uh, seed companies, 28 of them, and this is innovative a way that these companies were much engaged by uh, uh, engaging with farmers uh, through the demonstration plot, field day, to capacity building, but also creating the demand for farmers that are able to understand the importance of using high yielding variety and drought tolerant maize varieties. Another example 
is the sorghum and millet, which is a very important uh, commodities when you go to the Sahel and Savannah area of the continent, whereby with working uh, with uh, uh, ICRISAT and uh, uh, together with countries, especially through the National Research Institute and the extension services within the countries and uh, uh, seed company, we're able to avail uh, the high yielding variety to farmers and uh, the yield of uh, sorghum has increased from 1.2 metric tons to three metric tons per hectare. While for millet, it went from 0 0.7 metric tons to 1.7 metric tons per hectare when it comes to. But there's something to highlight here is also not only as developing this high yielding variety, the technologies coming up with uh, 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 this uh, maize, no, this uh, millet and sorghum as a source of flour for food security, but also the same time as a, a source of biomass, which is a very important source of feed as important livestock in this area. So that is a dual purpose uh, uh, of, of this variety that were able to respond to the need of farmers. So we're able to deploy one point to cover 1.6 million hectares of uh, sorghum, 280,000 hectares of uh, for millets across, uh, with this intervention area so that we're able to use all this uh, improved uh, seed and uh, packages of technology to farmers. Another important element that we would like to share with you as we move forward is this important commodity of uh, uh, aquaculture, which is very important as you go to Western, Central, Eastern, Southern Africa, that we reach to 250,000 farmers uh, by working with this network of, uh, uh, of uh, especially private company uh, the National Research Institute and Extension Services to avail this package of technology, especially the fast growing uh, disease resistant uh, fish, but also low quality feed that is accessible by farmers and improving post harvest uh, uh, technology of fisheries. And this was happening uh, through a very strong partnership as you see on the, on the picture, the youth has been a very uh, a strong pattern throughout when it comes to this uh, 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 partnership as we promote this technology throughout these countries uh, to avail uh, this technology to farmers and also increase uh, income. So that is one of the key achievements. We double the income for farmers that were able to access to this technology from 900 uh, USD to almost uh, to 1800 uh, USD harvest as compared before and after intervention. Uh, the another example I would like to, to share with you the, comp the livestock compact, which is uh, through early leadership uh, with working also with uh, uh, the, the National Extension Services and, and the Research Institute were able to avail this package of technology, especially uh, the dual purpose uh, breeds and the uh, high quality peel marsh that uh, are a source of, of feed, but also improving the forage as a supplement, also other supplement as we promote the fattening that was taken up by the youth and that has changed the life of uh, farmers in this area of intervention that were working with as at, in partnership with all private government to make this happen in the continent. So my last uh, 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 slide is will be actually uh, how based on this experience of the last two years, and as uh, Martin have already uh, uh, presented. So moving forward, we try to work closely. The issue is now that we, the model is proven to work, is providing a good result in terms of productivity. It is through a strong partnership. So the next uh, phases will be strongly engaging with countries so that we are able to take this to the scale. Engaging countries in a way that 
a government are able to accommodate uh, programs that are integrating these technologies so that we are able to take this technology to more farmers and bring more smiles as we see our uh, our mother there that's all farmers on the continent have this smile due to accessing to this technology so by working with close with government uh will and, and also development partners will be able to to work a uh, design together uh, the program that are accommodating this and accompany them because we have already infrastructure and the capacity to accompany this whole process as we take this at a scale so another lesson learned uh, throughout as we look to the uh, this promotion of uh, uh, cross uh, uh, seed uh, the, the, the the cross boundary seed movement uh, it was highlighted uh, especially the issue the hindrance of in terms of uh, regional variety disease and registration uh, policies. So we will be working closely at the regional level and the national level, where we have already this experience that by working government uh, doing with uh, an, an assessment at national level to understand the seed issue uh, in terms of regulatory framework, policy that are able to accommodate all this transboundary of movement of seed, fertilizer, and the agricultural goods. The same applies to, as we move forward, we'll be strengthening this uh, uh, input supply from uh, agro-dealer network as we build this strong agro-dealership network as we avail this technology closer to the farmers and also availing to them the access to finances issues uh, that we are able to avail this technology closer to the farmers as we promote the value chain approach from farmer uh, for input supply, producers, processors and the transport as we link to the market on the on, on in the cities and even at the export so they are able to bring all this smile to our continent as we transform agriculture this is through this strong partnership together we can make this happening and take this at a scale and reach more farmers on the continent thank you very much for your attention thank you very much innocent for that excellent overview very captivating indeed. I'm sure our audience have been noting and posting on our chat box questions and comments that they have from this presentation. Again, we shall be looking at what you have posted and give the presenters a chance to answer your questions during the interactive session. Before we get to that, it is panel discussion time. I would now like to engage our panelists to help shed more light into what and how the CAP program is doing to transform African agriculture and feed our cities. We shall be doing this in the form of some questions that I shall be posting to each of them. But first, let's meet our panelists. 